refresh your own memories about it first. Um, but this is what I'm suggesting you do. Get a piece of paper or even half sheet of paper or some area. Uh, maybe at least, a, at, least a, at least a half sheet. And two smaller sections and two larger sections. And I think the smaller section should be the um, uniform. There's less we have about the uniform. And the, I'll call it discrete table. Are you guys okay if I call it discrete table? Yeah. And then we have, of course, we have the normal distribution and the binomials. And then we're just going to kind of go over. I'm going to go over some things um, for each of these. Okay, everybody ready? Everybody has it has a, their bits of paper ready? Yeah. Ready. Okay. The so first is uniform. So it says that rectangle thing. I love that. They're like, that's the rectangle one. Yes, it's the rectangle one. The big L is your length. Little H is your height. What do we know about it? We know that the area is equal to the length times the width, or in this case, length times the height. We also know that the um, length times height for the whole thing has to equal 1, which means that my h has to be equal to 1 over l. Went over the big L. Not the little L, the big L. Right, the, whole, the whole length. What else do we know? We also know that the probability equals the area. Probability and area are the same thing. So you're going to find your little area of the, of the, of the problem you want. And I'm going to make a little rectangle out of that. And that little area, L times the height gives me my gives you my area, gives, it, gives you my probability. So maybe you want to throw in, what I do is I, uh, sometimes I'll throw in little um, numbers in there, just kind of give myself a good, yeah, a little practice to kind of say, oh yeah, if I throw some numbers in there, I can kind of know what's going on. So from two to 17, my length, my big L is gonna be, my big L will be 15. So then my h will be 1 over 15. Right now, look at, and look at my little l here. My, here, my little l here is 3. My height is 15, 1 over 15. So here, my probability would be 3 times 1 over 15, or 0.2. So I might kind of incorporate a little bit of a, a concrete example to help me out, up to you. But those are basically all the things you need to know about uniform. Okay. Next, we have the discrete probability distribution. That's that, that table thing, right? Like this one was the grab bags, or, or some of the grab bags, right? Where four of them were $2. Twelve of them were $3. So you have, so here's the deal. deal. The X's are the possible outcomes, what you could possibly get. Not how many, what you could possibly get. The probability is, again, it's not how many, but it's how many out of. But don't forget the out of. So the probability has to be between 0 and 1. So it should, the probability can't be 12, it's 12 out of 20. So I don't know if you didn't make notes about that, but, and there's, Excellent chance that I may give you the words to this and have you, have you fill the fill in the, oh have you fill in the table right so that could happen Move this over here what words? like the grab bag problem where I said there's um, there's grab bags and they're you know, they cost three dollars each and you know, four of them are two dollars, have two dollars worth of merchandise in them, twelve of them have three dollars worth of merchandise in them, and so forth, right? Um, so I might give it, do you, do you like that? Or I might say, um, 
the probability someone owns zero cats is 60%. The probability someone owns one cat is 25%. The probability someone owns two cats is 15%. The probability someone owns three cats is 5%. I don't know, something like that. And then you have to build a table from that. So I'm either going to give you the numbers, and the, and the, the probabilities could be, could be fractions, they could be percentages, like 20%, 30%, 15%, or they could be, um, they could be fractions in disguise, like 12 or this, 5 or this, one was that, and it's really 12 out of, right? You gotta, don't forget the out of, that means divide by. Um, how do you find the mean? And remember how to find the mean? Oh, actually, I'm going to make you focus. So remember how to find the mean of this? Let's last one on this table. Yes. How do you find the mean? You multiply x by the probability. Yeah, you multiply every x value by its probability. It's kind of like a weighted mean. You multiply every value by its weight, by its, by its probability, and then you add them all up. So here it is. Here's the, um, the part of it, right? Remember, the mean is the same thing as the expected value. They're the same thing. Mean and expected value are the exact same thing. You take every x value, multiply by its probability, and then you sum them, you add them up. Can you show that? Nope, not yet. Oh, no, I just meant just so I can see. I know. Okay, and. Um, and then the standard deviation, remember you can use your calculator. Oh, it is working. Yes. Um, so you can use your calculator with lists. So then you'd put this into list one, put that into list two, two. and then you can do stat, edit, um, to in, um, yeah, and put your, your um, information into list one, L1 and L2. And then stat calc one bar stats of L1 comma L2. Don't forget to include L2 or else it's, it's just going to average the first list, like one of each. And I'll move this back over. All right, so then. I know, hold on. So has anyone written this first part down? Uh, so then my question to you is, what if I ask you to find the probability that someone picks a grab bag and they get something that's worth five dollars or more? What's probably if someone picks a grab bag and they get something five they get five dollars or more? What, what do you think? The sum of the probabilities. Um, yeah, which probabilities? Um, five dollars or more, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. Right, you're just gonna add the probabilities. Five or more means five, ten, or twenty. You just add them up. Two twentieths, one twentieth, one twentieth, four twentieths. You just add the probabilities. So here, probability distribution table, I've given you the probabilities. You don't have to compute them. Binomial, normal CDF, you had, you, you're normal, you had to compute them yourselves. Here, table is really easy. It's like, here they are. Boom. You've got them. So all you have to do is, what's the probability that someone picks a $2 bag? Four out of 20, everybody see that? What's well, probably someone picks a $3 bag? 12 out of 20. So don't make it super complicated. These ones are straightforward. It's, you know, it, here it is. Here's your, you know, here are the probabilities. We're, we're giving them to you. So you just, you have five or more, you just add them up. All right, so for example, this one here, five or larger more than three, so that means 5, 10, or 20, add them up. All right, now we're on to normal, normal distribution. They're shaped like this. They're continuous, they're symmetrical, the mean is in the center. Negative infinity is way out that way. Positive infinity is way out this way. Right, put the z-scores along the bottom. So 
So the z-score of zero will be right in the middle. I will always, always, always have to give you the mean and standard deviation for a normal dis distribution. I have to. The mean and standard deviation are what makes up a normal distribution. So there's no way that I could possibly ask you a normal distribution problem without giving you the mean and standard deviation. That's, that's absolutely critical. Uh, other things, the mean is in the center. And then these are, are on the ends. And make sure you shave the area you want. Right. So just, I, 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 I mentioned that earlier, right? The mean, mean, mean is in the center. So zero is in, Z score of zero is in the center. Um, okay, so here we go. Here's some more good information. The area under the curve is the same thing equals the probability, which equals a percent of population. Those are all the same thing. Those are identical. Area under the curve equals probability equals percent of population. Also, I strongly recommend you put, well obviously your z-scores go along the bottom. If you want, you could put your x values in along the bottom as well, below them if you like. Uh, but definitely they should be, if you do that, they should be on two different lines. And maybe if you want, you can, you can um, you know, label them if you want, to just, you know, just so you're clear, keep those clear. The x values and the z-scores go along the bottom, ideally on different rows from each other. The areas go above. Um, how do you find a probability? You do normal CDF of Z1 comma Z2. If you were trying to find a Z-score and you're given a probability, that's the inverse, right? So inverse norm of the area on the left will give you the Z-score that matches up with that. So please remember that you use the calculator to get to and from probabilities. Right, to find a probability from a z-score or to find a z-score from a probability, you use the calculator, normal CDF or inverse norm. To get back and forth between z-scores and x values, that's just a calculation. No, you, know, you don't use the calculator functions for that, you just use the fact that how do you find a z-score? z equals x minus mu over sigma, or if you're trying to find a z-score, an x, x value from a z-score, you can do that mean is uh, x equals, what is that one? x equals the mean plus z times the standard deviation. Uh, times the standard deviation. Uh, you can use either one of those. Yeah, find the values. The, it's the same exact formula. It's just this formula rearranged. All, right, all I did was multiply both sides by sigma and add u to both sides. So if you want to have both formulas, you can have them. That's totally fine. And then there's that special case of the normal distribution, central limit theorem. That's the special case. When you use the central limit theorem, it kind of deserves a kind of little, almost, almost its own little pocket of its own. When you have a sample hinge, you're going to have an N, right? You have a sample size. Um, and the phrase probability of the mean or, or of the average, right? Mean and average are the same thing. The probability that the mean or the average, blah, blah, blah. Right? But your probability is the probability of the mean. Everything else is exactly the same as before. The only difference is that you're going to use sigma x bar, which is sigma over square root of n, instead of sigma when you find your z scores. It's the only difference.
very rare look at some binomials now? Okay, binomials. How do you know it's a binomial? That's kind of the hardest part, really. And I would say try to find something where there's something happening over and over again with only two possibilities, right? Like I'm saying, flip a coin over and over again. Um, roll a dice over and over again, and it's either a four or it isn't a four. Or you're drawing a marble over and over again, it's either blue marble or it isn't. Or you're sampling a bunch of people and you're finding out if they are, uh, if they are a dog owner or not. Right, so only two possible outcomes. And you're picking a number of people, and you know, and you have a fixed end, you know how many people you're picking, or how many coins you're gonna flip. There's a fixed end. And then every trial is, uh, has the same probability. All right, so these are some of the important things. N is the number of trials. Lil P, remember Lil P is the probability of success for just one trial. Not the whole thing, just one trial, one flip of the coin, one person you pick. Lil Q is the probability of failure. Lil P and Lil Q, they, they, they go hand in hand, right? Like my two P's and Q's, they, they match up. They have to add up to 100% between the two of them, because either you are or you aren't. They're complements of each other. The expected value of x for this one is the mean. Remember, for all of them, the expected value of x and the mean are the same thing. Um, for a binomial, it's just n times p. Your variance is mp squared, uh, mpq, and a standard deviation is the square root of mpq, the square root of, square root of your variance. And then you have your formula. Probably of x is n choose x times little p to the x times little q to the n minus x. With the binomial, I have to give you n and p. I won't. I won't. I won't. I, I will probably not at all give you the mean or the standard deviation. So, me, if I give you the mean and standard deviation, that's a normal distribution. If I give you n and p. That's binomial. But, and then little p, little p, right? Um, and please note, little p has nothing to do with n and x at all. Little p is out there in the world before your experiment even came along. Probably the heads? That, that's already out there, right? It's already, it's, it's universal kind of in a way. If I say 23% of Americans, blah, 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 write skateboards, that's already out there in the world before your experiment comes along. So that little p is kind of a universal number. It's already there. Nothing at all to do with your x and your n at all. So you should probably put a little, I put a little star by that because that's super, that's saying people screw up kind of a lot, I think. Okay, so. What can we do with them? What can we find with them? Well, the basic probability, right? But then we also have probabilities of other things, like probability that x is less than four. What's less than four? Three, two, one, and zero. Don't forget zero. Zero the hero. Do not forget zero. So how do I find that? I find each of the probabilities. Probability that x is three. Probability that x is two. Probability that x is one. Probability that x is zero. And I add them all up. So it could be three or two or one or zero. Or as you add. Yeah, I know. It's easy to forget zero. Right? And this is one where you have like those things where you often have the at least, or less than, or more than, or no more than, those sorts of things. Um, I might ask you to probably have at least two or at least one. The easiest way to find that, at least one, remember the couple of at least one is none, either you have one sibling or you have no siblings. So the easiest way to do that is one minus probability of 
zero. So find the probability of zero and subtract that from one. I might also ask you the probability of at least two, and in which case you could take one and subtract the probability of zero and subtract the probability of one. Okay, that, we, we did that one in class, but that could also happen. Eight, so probability of at least two equals one minus probability of zero plus probability of one. Right. Um, why? Because remember, I have all the probabilities. They all have to add up to one or 100%. So if I'm asking for these guys, I can just find these folks and subtract from one, because all of them have to add up to one. distribution, either on words or on a table, then you just have it. I'm giving it to you. you. You should know what to do with it, right? But if I don't give you that, then think about what the question the researcher is asking. So for example, if I said, do you like pancakes? Do you like pancakes? Shout it out. Would you like pancakes? Yeah. Do you like pancakes? Yeah. Do you like pancakes? Yeah. All right, so what kind of questions are, what kind of answers am I getting? Yes and no. Yes, no answers. So binomials are when it, what, not, what I'm, not what I'm asking you, but what did the original researcher ask the person? It might be, did I get a heads? Did I get a, t you know, did I get a heads or, or if, I flip, if I roll a dice, did I get a four? Um, but if I ask a person, um, I want to know, you know, 73% of Americans, I don't know, own a car. Then I would ask you, do you own a car? Right? You ask how much people they own a car or not. So it's a yes, no question. Um, so that's your first clue, it's binomial. Then confirm that, that the n is fixed. Right? I'm, I'm only, only going to ask so many people, or I'm only going to roll the dice so many times, or whatever. Draw so many marbles. Um, then you're looking at binomial. And again, binomial, you're given n and little p. Does it say assume it's normally distributed? If it says assume it's normally distributed, it's normal. Does that right? That's that's pretty pretty straightforward. If it says it's uniform, then it's uniform. If it involves a sample with an average or um, yeah. right. So if you're finding the mean, so I don't know what the mean is. Say 20, 29, 15. So say the mean is 16. So I'm gonna say the mean is 16. My x bar equals 16, and I subtract 16 from each one. Does that make any more sense now? Is it, is it what is it? Oh, it, should be an odd, I, I, it should be a whole number. It's not? It's good. Right, but, but that's the idea, right? You subtract the mean from every problem, you square them, you add them up, divide by n minus 1. OK. Good. Um, Okay, so this one, too. So I'm going to ask you, find the z-scores. So we need to find each z-score and just the z-score and write them down. Yep. That way I know that you know what z-scores are. Then I'll ask you to find the probability that x is between these two things. Just draw your picture, find the probability. Done. So don't give me my z-scores in B and don't go giving parts of B into my z-scores area. You need to prove to me how different they are. And then C, explain how the probability relates to field eyes or something like that. Um, I would suggest that maybe you, um, um, maybe you, you folks take a look at this, this one here and I will try to post 
answers to these ones. I think I have them the last semester. I'll try to put them up. But these, I think this is a really good and useful one. 